Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out GNOME 41 and giving it a little bit of a comparison to GNOME 40. Mainly with GNOME 41, we've received an update to the GNOME software store. If we check out about software, it's version 41 to match the GNOME version. And if we go back and check this out, we can compare it to the last version of the GNOME store. Let's check that out real quick. This right here is the GNOME 40 store. We can see we have similar headings up top. The search bar on the left, the settings on the right, but the main difference here, if we scroll back to GNOME 41, what you see in the middle, we now have these tiles that say create, work, play, sort of like categories, whereas in 40, we don't have those. Instead, we have tiles first starting with the editor's pick. The tiles also got changed over in GNOME 41. If we look down here, editor's choice now has longer rectangular tiles surrounding them, and they have these other other categories at the very bottom, which was also included in the last one, but uh, there's actually less of them in the newer GNOME 41. If we go to the top and we hit the menu, we still have the same stuff here. Let's go to installed and see what those look like. Very similar, as you can tell. They've also added a few icons up above for the explore, installed, and updates headings, and they're featuring more apps. So let's check out something like Thunderbird real quick just to see what this looks like. Here in GNOME 41, the store looks like this. So let's check out an application. Let's see GNOME Maps real quick and what that looks like here in 41 when you select an application. And then in 40, let's check that out as well. If we click on GNOME Maps, we can scroll down through the app. We see what version, when it was last updated, some details here, reviews, and then some reviews below. We also have the option of selecting from what source we want. So if this is from the Fedora official repos to get GNOME Maps, but let's check out 41. You have the open button here, a little more pronounced, a delete button as well. Up top, you have access to flat packs here by default, as well as the official repo. GNOME 41 now lets you slide through in the store to check out pictures instead of just clicking on them. They've also redesigned all the locations and given you a little bit more information here about the apps or packages themselves. It tells you install size, if it's safe or not, what it's made for, age ratings, version numbers, and again, the reviews are very much uh, similar below. Not too much there, but we do have the clickable project website, donate and reporting issues here, and how to get involved with the community who built this app. Very good. That's pretty much an exploration of the new GNOME 41 updated software store. We'll exit out of that and talk about some more stuff here in GNOME 41. This, of course, is one of the biggest and most notable changes since the store has received a refresh. The GNOME team has said that they've made changes behind the scenes as well to make things faster and more fluid, which is great. But uh, one more exciting thing here is uh, actually in the settings. So if we open up settings here in 41, what we'll find is a new tab called multitasking. This wasn't there before, which allows you to turn on hot corners, active screen edges, changes up whether the workspaces are dynamic or fixed. I have mine fixed currently. It also shows how workspaces can go across all displays or, or just your primary display. And then application switching can be from all workspaces or only the current workspace. So this is a new setting to look at. One that's been updated here is the power. So let's look at a comparison real quick. Here's GNOME 40 in the power section in the settings. And here's GNOME 41 with the power section in the settings. What you'll notice is there's different power modes and you can still control the screen blinking and automatic suspend. You'll have up to three modes, which is a power saver, balanced, and a performance mode if your system allows for it. You should also have options like dimming the screen. You'll get a little bit more here if you're running on a laptop environment, I believe. So that's new and it's definitely something to check out if you're gonna be running GNOME 41. It gives you a little bit more control over your performance and your battery life. So make sure to check that one out. Another new setting you'll find is mobile network. If you click on that, you will be able to enable or disable the mobile network. And if it does find a mobile network installed on your computer, you can configure it, set your mode between 2G, 3G, 4G, so on and so forth. 
for you to configure those mobile network connections that you may or may not have if you don't have Wi-Fi or if you don't have a wired connection and you wanna use a mobile network. I know a lot of people ask me about this one. Well, now GNOME 41 gives you a little bit easier access to that. The GNOME Music app also received an overhaul, so check that one out if you use it. That's not currently installed on the system, so I'm not gonna check it out. But what I will check out is a new connections app, which is quite exciting for me at least. It's probably the most exciting thing. So if I go to connections, I'll see it right here. We didn't have this in GNOME 40 as far as I'm aware, but it is a great application because built in, it allows you to create as many connections as you want, both RDP and VNC. So it says here, standard for connecting to Windows. That's the remote desktop protocol. And it allows you to connect your computer if you have this connections no map to various other remote desktops on your network, including Mac OS, other Linux computers, and Windows computers. Great if you're working in IT and you wanna use an app just to quickly remote over to someone else's computer and help them out, or just manage a computer remotely. A fantastic app. You can type in, depending on what you're using, I believe it's uh, like this, RDP slash slash slash, and then type in some IP address or domain name, dot local perhaps, or, or what have you. And this will use the RDP protocol to connect to some IP address or domain name, and then you'll enter in more information so you can log in. You can also use VNC. So if you just type in VNC and then slash slash again, an IP address, let's just say maybe it's uh, 192.168.1.2 for some reason. You can connect to this locally, of course, but a super useful and looks like easy to use app. Let's hit connect real quick. It should fail, of course. I don't even belong to this subnet but let's check out what this looks like. And there you go. Now you have a session created. Let's try out another one. So like RDP, we'll just do RDP savvynick.com. And now it's trying to connect to 3389. I can click between the two different sessions here. Of course, that one didn't work either, but I definitely something cool to check out and might be a reason to upgrade to GNOME 41 if you wanna use that connections app. A few more things, you can now encrypt zip archive files, which will require a password to log in. ICS files are now importable to the calendar app. There's improvements done to other apps, including their website for developers and other tweaks. I use their welcome tour app, which was really nice. I believe I can launch it here if we just do tour. And you can run through the tour of GNOME 41 quite quickly. They did a nice job here, just kind of introducing you to some of the new features. Mainly those features were from GNOME 40. They also tout that they have GNOME 41 available in 38 languages. So that's pretty nice if you are from a non-English speaking country. Know that GNOME has quite a few languages available. I'll mention that the power mode is also available up here. If you click on these icons, you'll get a power mode now introduced to you. We looked at these settings earlier, but this is an easier way to access those settings. You can just select between the different profiles that are available for your computer. Again, some will have performance as well. You also have a quick access to those power settings if need be. Well, that's really about it for GNOME 41. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.